Hey guys, Mr. Post, and on today's video, we're going to be doing some extra practice on balancing reactions. Today we're going to focus on three reactions only, and they're going to be a pretty difficult reaction to balance, so we only really need three in order to get the hang of it. If at any point you would like to actually take an attempt at this yourself, please press pause, work the problem out, and I'll come back with the answers. First thing we're going to do when we check this problem out is look at the atoms involved. I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And in the reactants, I have 20 atoms of carbon, 42 atoms of hydrogen, and 2 atoms of oxygen. That came from my subscripts. And in the products, I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I have 1 carbon. 2 plus 1 gives me 3 oxygens and two hydrogens. And it's clear that the law of conservation of mass is not satisfied here. I have a lot of atoms on the left-hand side of the reaction in the reactants, and I need to have the equal amount on the right-hand side. So we're going to balance this equation using coefficients, and the coefficients we placed in our blanks, and they're going to be used as multipliers that are distributed into the subscripts. So here we go. Let's go ahead and balance carbon right now. I have 20 carbons, and I have one carbon, so it's going to be 20 times 1 to give me 20. Let's look at hydrogen. Right now I have 42 hydrogens. Okay, over here I'm going to need what times 2 is going to give me 42. I'm going to use the coefficient 21. And so now I have a 42 as well. The law of conservation of mass is working out for us. 20 and 42 looks good. How many oxygens do I have? Over here I have 2. In the products, I have 20 times 2 give me 40. And this is a plus now, plus I have 21 times 1. And I'm going to have 40 plus 21 to give me, in this case, 61 oxygens. So over here I now have 61 oxygens. All right, guys, what do I need to multiply by 2 in order to get 61? And the correct answer is 30.5. That is the correct answer. All right. So, so far, my coefficients are 1, 30.5, 20, and 21. What you have to do at this point is you have to get rid of the 0.5, and you're not allowed to round. You can't round that out. I want you to double that number, meaning I want you to double every single coefficient in this equation in order to make this a round number, a whole number. So if I double number 1, it becomes a 2. This then becomes a 61, this would become 40, and this would become 42. And the coefficients of 2, 61, 40, and 42 are the correct coefficients. I know that because I cannot reduce these by a common number. That would enable me to have lower whole number ratios. All right, guys, that was a difficult problem, but if you focus on how to work this out, keep your atom inventory down below, you should be able to get it. Okay, guys, this is a pretty big equation here. This is an acid-base reaction. It's also known as a double replacement reaction. A lot of atoms are involved. In this case, the secret I'm going to give you is a, a pretty good secret, and that is to balance the equation with the easiest elements to balance first. All right, I'm going to make a little list right down here. The atoms involved in this problem are hydrogen, phosphorus, oxygen, and magnesium. Those are the four atoms involved here. What I want you to do is look at this. Okay, Consider this area one area, this area a second area, my third area, and my fourth area. In how many areas does hydrogen appear? Hydrogen makes an appearance here, here, and at the very end. So it makes an appearance in three out of the four possible locations in this reaction. Magnesium exists right here and also here. So it only makes an appearance in two out of the four possible places. Phosphorus makes an appearance here and here. That's two out of the four places and you're going to find oxygen appears in every single location. Now oxygen is going to be the most difficult element to balance because when I make a change in one place 
I definitely have to make sure I have the same changes reflected on the other side. That's difficult when it appears in four places. So my advice to you is simple. You are going to balance the elements in the order that they appear from least to greatest. Meaning, I'm going to balance either phosphorus or magnesium first because they balanced each other out the easiest. Let's check it out. Let's begin with magnesium. Okay? Magnesium, I have one magnesium over here and three on this side. Okay, so I'm just going to do a simple three. Magnesiums are done. All right, the next one I'm going to do is phosphorus. I have one phosphorus here, and I have two phosphoruses over there. I'm going to throw a two in right here. Two times one gives me two. Awesome, phosphorus is done. Let's look at hydrogen. Two times three is six H's. And what I have here is three times two hydrogens. Remember, this two is distributed into H, two is distributed into O. So it's two H's times three to give me six hydrogens. So altogether, I have 12 hydrogens on this side. I need 12 hydrogens over here. And the coefficient I will use is six. Six times two gives me 12 hydrogens. If you're concerned about the oxygens, you don't need to be at this point because they've actually worked themselves out. When you balance the reaction using the elements that appear least first, going to the next least, finally to the most, you end up working the problem out ahead of time. 2 times 4 gives me 8 oxygens, plus, here we go guys, 3 times 1 is 3, times 2 is 6 oxygen. So all together on this side I have 8 plus 6 is 14 oxygens. Look over here, 2 times 4 gives me 8 oxygens, plus 6 times 1 gives me 6 oxygens. 8 and 6, and 8 and 6. So it does work out, the coefficients are 2, 3, 1, and 6. Okay, guys, in our final example of the day here, we're going to look at this equation. And I want you to try and balance this on your own prior to me giving you a little bit of help here. Okay, same way as last time, the element that appears most often in this case happens to be oxygen. I'll balance that last. I'm going to start balancing here. I have two aluminums right here, and I want to make sure I have two aluminums in the other side as well. With the subscript being 1, I'm going to use 2 times 1 to give me two aluminums. So, so far, my aluminums are looking pretty good. All right, calcium, and calcium appears balanced, 1 and 1 on each side. Awesome. Now, sulfur, I have 3 times 1 to give me 3 sulfurs. So, I'm actually going to do this, 3 sulfurs. Now, 3 times 1 does give me 3 calciums. So, I need to go back here and make it 3 calciums. How about those hydrogens? Let's check them out. 2 times 1 is 2 hydrogens, times 3 is 6 hydrogens. And likewise over here, 3 times 1 is 3 hydrogens, times 2 is 6 hydrogens. So the hydrogens appear to be balanced. How about those oxygens? We're going to handle the oxygens last. All right, 3 times 4 gives me 12 oxygens, plus 2 times 1 times 3 gives me 6 oxygens. So I have 18 oxygens on the left-hand side in the reactants. How many oxygens do I have in the products? 3 times 4 is 12 oxygens plus 2 times 1 times 3 gives me 6. So what we're going to see here is that the reaction actually was balanced out. My coefficients are 1, 3, 3, and 2. And once again, if you stick with the idea of balancing the elements that appear most often last, these problems become very, very easy problems. All right, guys. Feel free to go back, try any example over again. These are difficult problems. If you struggle a little bit, please try some more practice on them. Press pause and try to work the problems out again. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. I hope it was helpful.